Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to Real Time Custom Rods and Real Time Fishing. Uh, we were fishing out here on a windy day today, and the, the wind was unbearable on the microphone. I've got all the you know noise muffling devices I know to put on my GoPro, and it it worked, but it didn't work well enough. And I'm fishing with my wife and she didn't have her microphone on so you could hear me talking and you can't hear her talking it sounded kind of crazy anyway i'm doing a voiceover i've never done one of these and what we're fishing today we're fishing in a in a bay off of the main river and the wind was so bad that we just picked the bank fortunately in that bay that that pushed us down the bank and wasn't too much of an effort to keep off of it um like I said, the camera probably doesn't show how windy it was, but trust me, I don't know what it was blowing, but it was blowing pretty good. We were in three to five foot deep of water. Uh, I've told they were catching some slot red up here and some big blues, and of course some trout are still around. As I record this, it's the last week in May. No, it's not, it's May 20, May 18th. Anyway, we were in three, like I said, three to five foot of water. MR-17 seemed to be what they wanted. We loaded them up with, with, with Mardi Gras, uh, Procure, and fished the dickens out of them. And I can tell you what, we caught a, had a couple of strikes and I was telling my wife, I said, when I get on the other side and I'm talking to my maker, I'm gonna ask him a couple of things and one of them somewhere on, down on that list is behind the world. Can a speckled trout grab a mouth full of treble hooks and jump up and spit them out or spit them out underwater even? I can have one brush up against my sleeve and I've got to get my pocket knife out and cut it out. So anyway, I'm kind of curious about how that can even happen. Like I said, it was a slow day. We were fishing. Good thing about this little little bay, there's a lot of little feeder creeks into it. I don't know. They, they're about five or six feet wide at the at the mouth, and they go up into this marsh. I really don't know how far. I would guess about 25 or 30 feet. But like I said, we spotted bait. We were fishing toward the bait, fishing down the bank, picking up a few strikes here and there. We threw everything we could at them. Uh, Again, I'm guilty of fishing my confidence baits probably too much, but I did. But I did try some paddle tails and some jerk shads, and none of that seemed to pay off. So we fished right along here in the back of this bay, which is what you're seeing off to the right of the of the picture now. You're, I can, I can. It's not as far as it looks on this camera, and I can see down there, and I can see bait. And there's actually a little point around to the left where the water got a little a little calm and you could really see bait. I've hooked one up here. It's one of the first ones we caught. We only put two in the boat. We kept two. I don't keep a lot of fish. Uh, we decided we were going to have a fish fry when we got home this evening so we did keep a couple of fish. This one's about 16 inches. She's getting it in the net for me and we're gonna throw that one in the live well. Now, if it had been anywhere 20 inches or more, I'd have let him go, because that's what I do. I'm in the Release Over 20 program, and I would encourage anyone to participate in that. And I'm not gonna to try to quote how many eggs a 20-inch trout and larger can lay, but it's phenomenal, as opposed to a 14 to 16-inch trout. So I encourage you to release those. And they're not the best eating ones anyway. You want to go home and have a little fish fry, get you a 14 to 16 inch trout and go home and fry them up. So that's what we did. One of these was about 17, if I remember right. The other one was just under 16. Anyway, we're continuing to fish down here. We're getting toward the back of this bay. I'm getting ready to hook up on another one up here. Uh, just, just as soon as we move along, another one hits pretty good on that Mardi Gras and I, I bring him in. I think it's right about now. And we, the closer we get to that bait, I'm adjusting my camera there. Yeah, I've got him hooked up there now. But the closer we get to that bait and that wind's got it, the bait just pushed against that shore, the more action we're seeing. Something's feeding up there. Uh, there's some flounder feeding up there, I believe. We did the put on a jerk shed toward the end of this, uh, at the back of this bay, I should say. 
and try to get whatever it was that was chasing the bait up in there to hit, but they didn't. Uh, we did get some bites on the jerk shad. And here we are getting this one in the boat. Like I said, it was about 16 inches, if I remember right. I don't think it was any larger than that. We're getting him in the boat, and we're going to continue to fish for a little while longer. But as we saw that bait in the back, as we saw it breaking, we did put on some different baits. Like I said, soft shads and things like that. And we're getting some literally nibbles. I think they were small flounder. We'd love to get a slot red and bring it back and put it on the grill. If we kept it, may not keep it, I don't know. But we didn't, we didn't seem to have any luck with that. So, folks, I appreciate you watching. This is the end of the video now. If you like what you see, please subscribe. I'd sure appreciate it. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you next time.